Welcome to the Ragnarok Grand Finals between True and Frost. True going for Hans for game one. They had Hans Magyars and Franks as options. And Frost9 going with the Magyars, not catching this villager. And this was a best of nine Grand Finals. Thanks Major KD for the sub. No, clear capsules for the sub to Major KD. Thanks a lot. We do have... Um, two barracks, two stables, four ranges, four frost, and um, seven stables, four ranges, and Rex only after that. Very aggressive start for True here for the Hunts against Magyars, where, as I said before, the Hunts want to do the early damage. Later on, the Magyars are stronger with the better Cav Archers and with Mega. So don't cost gold. Thanks for another sub gift. I hope the sound level is fine best of nine oof best of nine hype tom snuffles thanks for all the gift subs clear capsules and thank you all for the support for the follows and tom snuffle as well throughout the whole tournament but now let's let me cast it um true kind of all around frost did get a castle up and um village account one to one so probably not really enough Damage for true. Let me. Oh, I can't. Well. <laughs> the ban hammer from Major KD. Who do you want to ban? As uh, Frost seems to have kind of survived the start. Three villager kills on both sides. You guys are going crazy. Hype train. Thank you. I need to turn down the alert volume, maybe. I just turn it down on my end. Thanks a lot, but I will try to focus on, on casting game one over here. I'll thank you all properly after the game. Um, the characters are trying to deny that castle. Villager does survive, does get hits off now. This villager dies. This villager is still building the castle. Um, True not focusing down that villager. I think the castle will go up 99% and the castle goes up. True failing to deny that castle. Now only the right side of the base still open. Another castle to the back. So I did it set in the intro that uh, true castles would be under storm by the frosty hordes because that kind of fitted better with the names but true the ag more aggressive player has to be the more aggressive player in game number one and we do see a four um castle base very defensive start from the magyars over here so he's the one defending his castles right now true is fighting under them kd is speaking for true um even if he's fighting under three castles can he overwhelm them is that worth it does he have traps on the way i think he needs traps he does have a castle up true probably needs to dq some and then go for a quick push with trebuchets do we have siege rams also don't see siege rams siege rams probably not as good as this mega hasa and onagers Frost with every civilization will make Onagers. In the semi-finals, he even made Mangonels when he was Turks and could not make Onagers. So you know there's Onagers on the base. That's why apparently Rams aren't that much worth it. Trebuchets are now coming out. True has massive population advantage, kind of normal with the Hunts against the Magyars. Uh, the really expectations of Frost actually managed to take serious. I say 5 3 for Frost. And Frost is seed 1 in the tournament. And there was a show match before the tournament where Frost 3 0 true. But true playing way better during the tournament than he did in that show match. And it's showing he has the mega advantage, uh, the hunt advantage that you can get over here. Two trebuchets are out. Counter trebuchet from Frost is a nice move as the Yonagers will not be able to get close to the trebuchets that soon true also controlling the back here and the longer the game goes we saw blue being almost dead to zayu with megas versus hans but then taking the long game back so that can always happen and it doesn't look like true is breaking frost here so even though it doesn't look like it i actually favor the position of frost here 25 villagers to 37 isn't that bad, so it isn't like getting killed at the start bad. And I tend to think that Hans need to make it getting killed at the start bad for the Magyars over here. What a horrible place to fight. Yeah, with all the onagers true fighting in that choke point, surely not optimal. Now the Magyar uh, CA masters are there as well. Tarkins, I really like the Tarkin choice. Tarkins are getting close as well. 
Military is evening out and his death ball is better. It will be even better later on. Um, Drew does have like the surround with these castles here. Frost's already trapping it though. Now trying to deny the economy. Will that castle go up? That castle also goes up. Drew underestimating Onagers. That could make it for a rough set against the player that always plays Onagers. Um, as is Frost. I'm kind of glad you are at least able to watch today. Um, originally I wanted to ask you to co-cast with, with you. I assumed you would not be able to, right? Um, so sorry you might be draining me later on if this goes long, but for the start I'm solo casting this. And Drew has still a good map position, but I feel like the Onagers are getting so many kills. Drew now decisive KD advantage. He started into this first fight with a big um, KD advantage. Now Frost has taken that away from him with this Onager choke point over there uh, more trebuchets coming out but there's kind of no buildings here to destroy 5-0 relics 4-0 so far uh, but indeed true making good on that map control but magias ah see if that can survive without relics i don't know if in these non-mirror matchups uh 4-0 relic lead is as decisive in a mirror it's very decisive or in uh in some place it is decisive as well uh, Magus would only get half the gold from relics anyways here due to the hunt bonus um, We saw a relic win game in the semi-finals between frost and um, Favorite where frost kind of won by relics. So it's not out of the question. Hi epic sea dragon and Rage is here as well playing in the tournament too and Got a gift up from them and yes, we had uh, level one of the hype train completed. Thanks everybody. Six subs overall. That's crazy support. Thanks for showing up to the finals everybody. As Frost seems to slowly push this back and that's what Frost likes to do. Slowly pushing things back with a ball of onagers. That is Frost's specialty. That is what he likes to do. I adjusted the sound settings a bit um, because I turned them down for the winner interview at the semi-finals. So if the game sound is too loud, if I'm not loud enough, etc. Please tell me in chat uh true about to has already lost two out of his three forward castles is about to lose the third uh, but indeed he get all five relics so that will be a steady gold supply for the hunts maybe can keep up cheap ca uh longer there than the magias but the magias if they have castles still up and frost still has very defensive castles which i think is very smart with the magars because they're one of your main production buildings that you need for mega hussars why 75 fills only um plus the five relics it's kind of 85 right and i think that's enough for hans cheap units true wants to get a bigger army than frost because uh the megas have the stronger army um besides tarkins um but they have stronger ca so if hans can get more population i think my more military population they have better chances the five relics are generating gold so you need kind of five less or eight less villagers on gold so i think i actually like the eco size um for true and he is sending in Tarkin raids there food economy for frost 46 all in like this little space of the map like take a look at the whole map that's frost that's all that frost is controlling and he managed to fit um over almost 50 farms in it so i'm getting raided um with like really nice farming placements that allow you to do that at least on dm levels right on rm levels that wouldn't be but for dm that super compact farming really really helpful and the onagers are the other advantage that the megas have um with hans only getting manganels i feel like true controls too much now that he will wear down frost go push does frost even need to push though right there's no relics together anymore, still has gold. He can... Yes, 45 farms. Yeah, he needs some more farmers up probably. He doesn't control any stone. Um, but uh, he does, like, he doesn't have any stone, but he still controls one. To try and get the raids in. Tarkin's very good at killing buildings. We are not allowed, we did not allow walls in the tournament besides quick walls. So there will not be any stone walls holding the Tarkinitos back. So the house walls can probably be killed by the Mega Hussa are there catching the mouth though. And we are transitioning to a longer game where true has all the map 
and Frost is in basically this one screen. Um, very interesting scenario. I think Magus can still do it with that little mech control. Most other sylphs are dead when they are confined to such a space and also most people are dead then because they can't place 50 farms in such a compact spot and protect the economy. That's a great castle over here and we also have like castle towards there to seal it off um, and walls in the south with the Tarkins being pushed back there. I feel like two controls to... Oh, we already read that. And this is kind of where the units go to die, right? All the battles happening in this little spot. True losing a lot of CA2 on it just shots. That didn't look too pretty. KD still in advantage of Frost by around about 50. And that hill system is free of castles now. True with so many forward castles does have nothing to protect his economy. Um, with that all in push. So if the Magas can go to raid over here. Read it again, still relevant. I feel like True controls too much now that he will wear down Frost's slow push. Why too much? Like I still don't really understand the grammar of that, even if I read it again. Um You think True wins, I guess? I, I, but I don't really understand what is too much control. Can you control too much? Too much for Frost to push it slowly. Hmm. But Frost could raid, and he has good farming eco, better farming eco than True actually, but True now going up to 100 villagers, so he's not going for that full army. And Tifa says Frost will take this. I also favor Frost too. And the raids have started. I uh, haven't really found the TC, but they did start. And what do Hans really do against the Auditor CA bell here? Yeah, now he's trying Halberdiers, but that obviously won't work with the Cavarchers killing the Halberdiers. Um, the Honor just getting some really nice shots at the CA, and we can't afford uh, Tarkins for. Uh, that long now a lot of it just going to build that castle really quickly because this is a superior army from frost frost also has three trebuchets with it with it okay he's still favoring true's position true needs a side push he only has a few raids there i think frost space is very well protected shouldn't fight with the ca under the castle probably but the three trebuchets will make short work light coming in with his emote amazing emotes thank you Fingers crossed to help out Frost. So Regni on the side of Frost, looking, in my opinion, still good. In Katie's opinion, it's looking good for True. Speaks for what a great grand finals we're gonna have, gonna see today. Um, very interesting game, True. Now trapping from the south, that would be important. Like the much farm stays uh, True can take away, the better for him. But there are Magia Halsa easily killing that trebuchet. That was without production and True lost his castle up north. Doesn't have many castles anymore. Only two castles can produce his unique unit from stable. Will I be up until 4 in the morning? Yeah, later Zayu is going to come and support me. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Lord of Frost wins 10,000% test, Feffy. Um, people arguing about who is in the better position. I th still think it is frost as well uh, especially if you can control this hill there's one gold over here for tr for true who's already made his main mind his mind his main gold and is on this gold so these are the two last golds on the map there for true while ton of gold still in the base of um frost so longer it goes i think the better for frost thank you antifa for the follow and thanks for how many gift subs clear capsules clear capsules is favorite right no who is clear capsules it's also a player i think it was favorite so thanks a lot roger one two three four for four gift subs and hezzy gifting us up to paulette as well and tom snuffles with the resub thanks for the amazing hype everybody um Glad you enjoyed the tournament and are enjoying the grand finals so far. True is taking over the hill there using monks. These are all the monks for collecting relics to heal up his cavatures and his Tarkins. Really, really nice move. He ran out of castles to garrison heal them in. <laughs> um, as this castle is getting killed, how much gold is there left? Okay, the gold is almost empty, so then might be important for wood control later, but not for the gold anymore a little bit of stone there still to take 
Um, another castle in the bank for Frost. Drew could also place a castle soon. Still a stone here to fight over, but now the raids are starting from uh, Frost. And Kellen's Cal Fudico, Kellen is true, um, is looking very, very unprotected. Nice farms, really, around the TC. So if you can quickly garrison them, he shouldn't lose too many villagers. But he will need some military to defend uh, his eco not being idle. Oh no! Oh my god. Oh my god. That was very, very well played by Frost to like do the ratings, get the attention of Frost to the back, so uh, of True to the back. So True didn't watch his Cavachers because he was trying to catch these raids. And big, big onager shots coming in for Frost. Indeed, looking very juicy with those shots. True now only down to 25, 21. Very low HP cavalry archers. Ken still has some in the queue. But that's the moment for Frost to push. That's the moment for Frost to put the one castle that he can still afford on that hill. Thereby securing that stone. Immediately going to it. No, maybe that was from earlier. But I bet he will go to that stone afterwards to be able to place more castles in true space. Megars for the win. It does seem like they are winning. And that's also still the last gold on the map outside of uh, the base of Frost. And that he still has gold in his base should tell us something as well. Um, where are the five relics? Five relics are here in the back. True's uh, last income of gold. Um, so a little bit of fighting over here. But this is the dangerous push. This is the Frost push on it just with it. 32, 32 of each unit type. 40 CA now. And... That does look good. Okay, Lance Knight Law. Yeah, I think that is a position that Drew cannot come back from. Uh, we were a little bit behind, so let's speed it up here so we catch up to live. As Drew is trying a, another attempt there, but it is the last attempt, and Frost takes game number one in the grand finals with Magyars versus Hans. The start looked close, but the they all, all the units dying here in that choke point to the onagers saved Frost, and he was able to push it back then. And nice work there on the back raids, and then the big onager shots from Frost. Frost, an expert on how to kill big armies with onagers. And so glad to see you all here in chat coming out for the grand finals. Um, we gave true head was up to 173 military, but could not break frost. Frost, um, getting up and nice food economy as well. 30k food in the bank, going for a lot of mega hussa that made it for him. And that was game one. So, frost taking one game that isn't the end of the world, it is a best of nine. So, just one game won't decide everything, but every game counts, obviously. So, let's see. And I will try to count games this time as well. <laughs> Mova Tenton, thanks for the follow three minutes ago. And yeah, thanks again for the crazy support with the gift subs as we started. Tom Snuffles with the sub. Um, favorite with the gift subs. 2KD, Boomstick, Joru, and Rage. And Hezzy with the gift sub to Paulette. Thanks a lot, guys. So we're gonna go to a home map of True now. He lost runestones. He can pick it again though. Or he got go for Cavasan, Four Lakes, or Marketplace. In the semifinals, he only picked Golden Swamp to pick it away from Keller. This time Frost picked Golden Swamp, I think, in order to play it as he did against Favorite in the semifinals as well. <laughs> True's playing against the Deathmatch World Cup 5 winner, they say. And uh, yeah, Hazzy wants his rocks. So, do you agree with that? What Gordy Glock just wrote in DM Gaming? Frost will win the next World Cup. The qualifiers are about to start. Daywalker thinks we're gonna see four legs. Hmm. 
Hmm, they reused? Oh, like that. And it is Kavasan, though! It is Kavasan. Saracens against Hindustanis on Kavasan. Uh, with Frost picking Saracens, and I think that's uh, mistake. Ha, huh, good draws would kill Saracens, I believe. Not sure about Hindustanis, but the Camels are also really good. Saracen Camels are also good too. Hmm, what do you think is better, Saracens or Hindustanis? Obviously very tested matchups at this stage, so should be a close one Sif wise. Calvin will go Gulam probably. <laughs> Ignore my predictions, buy it off. Okay, fine. Welcome to GameTube. We do see an instant market by Mr. Frost as the Saracens and for six stables and six barracks for the Hindustanis. Very classic like Indian start. Back when it was Indian, that was the standard for Indians. Um, four stables, five barracks. So barracks for the Saracens. We might see some pikemen over here to weather the initial camel storm from the Hindustanis. And Saracens don't have that many options here. They get sea giants just though. And I think we should see a lot of sea drawings, and which is obviously also why Frost, who got the market just now, has picked Saracens. He can get the nice Onager shots. And what does Frost excel at? The nice Onager shots. Quicker production probably for the Hindustanis, whose camels also attack quicker, and they do have six stables. So I expect the Hindustanis to get the hill first, and then a big siege push um, or siege pike push, I guess guess to push that back but frost also in true space we get this villager over here two to two villagers so rush is quite even in the set so far as was last game kd favoring the saracens and fxc dragon just enjoying the matchup and nobody building castles in the middle yet both busy with each other's raids palisade walls by true uh you can quick wall with stone walls um but I guess the Palisade did the job. And now True is looking to get a castle up in the middle of the map. Uh, some patrols by Frost, but are going back again, so the villager will actually get to the castle. A little bit of a miss patrol for the player from Sweden on the left side of the screen. And now the Habitus are joining the party. Habit is obviously stronger than Python, but we do have the Sea Jonitors. Frost's favorite unit on the field, but not enough of the favorite or non-favorite units for Frost on the field, as true as the bigger army in the middle, and will potentially get that castle up. Getting another castle here to control the northern lake does control, each lake controls like one of the gold spawn on true side, so a little bit better map gen as to that. Uh, the other goals are in the back for both players, so he doesn't directly control any goals, which makes the hill less valuable than if there is front goals. And I think that should be good for the Saracen player. So both having certain advantages on the map there. Big Onager shots coming in, killing all the units, independent of on which side they are from. They don't ask which side are you from, they just kill you. And these camels can kill buildings quite fast. We have an anti-building bonus. Maybe who wants to go with all the sims that had anti-building bonuses. Had the uh, Tarkinitos before and now the Hindustani camels. Because uh, well, Frost likes to wall a lot. Castles going up. All the camels are going down for the Hindustanis. We do have more camels in queue and more halberdiers. A few not really in the fight yet. Economy development. Drew is ahead in villagers. Uh, Frost again going for a very tight base with back castles everywhere. So very much like game one. Um, and with a death ball army that he likes to micro down. Like the way Frost plays is he stabilizes. He gets his very, very compact base up that is very easy to defend. And then he makes one death ball 
and he micro stat for a little slow push for the next 30 minutes. That's like signature frost playstyle. While true is like quick expansion, I control all the map, I take little fights here and there, little fights here and there. I take more control, I take more control, I take a dust castle down here, I take a castle down there. Um, and I try to take efficient fights with also with smaller armies a lot and win the game on the three hour mark. Um, but the siege on it just shots are so strong for Frost. Like the KD is insanely in his favor. 300 to 160. Um, there's no hydrate button on my stream. Also no breathing button, but okay, I'll try. Now I actually hydrated instead of breathing. <laughs> castle falling and bombard cannons are out for the hindustanis getting one nice shot in but overall the typical frost death ball looks like the typical frost death ball it has a lot of onagers and mamelukes even because they get more range and they're good at sniping bombard cannons they are also great against infantry when a nice timing on the mameluk edition as well as drew does not have many camels anymore Instead going for the cheaper units, something that True likes a lot is cheap units. Um, and the bomber cannons to whittle down the push from Frost. Which account a little bit better for True. Um, both mainly on, well, Frost economy is kind of nowhere and uh, True's is on gold. Um, True being the more old school player, likes to put everything on gold first and then transition to farms around his TCs. Um, kind of the the ultra style of uh, that equal weapon would be Jitba. And Camel's trying to loop around, but only finding the champions. Interesting that we have a champion edition over here already. Now Frost very very stretched on resources. The resource economy is looking better for True, but Frost's push army always so hard to stop. Um, and he is taking over the middle um, and Drew needs to think of some way to stop that push. He will have time because it's slow. Um, but during the push of Frost also his uh, units are changing. Frost nearly killed 100 of his own army. Um, yeah, but his KD is still better by a lot. <laughs> See, you can win games by killing your own army killer. Tell that to Django. Winning your, killing your own army is a completely legit winning move. Frost does it, right? If Frost does it, I'm allowed to do it too, no? Prediction for game two is up as True started the raiding. And Tezzy can lose some more points. Oh no, Tezzy actually won points last game, I think. One cannon gain on the lake. The Grok got killed, but the cannon gain still there being super annoying. Um, Hindustani is usually not going for any ranged units, so how is he gonna kill that? Maybe Monk? Maybe he could use a Monk to kill that. Relics? Frost and Truga didn't get the most of the relics while he had the middle control. Only getting one in his back. Um, and Frost is getting most of the relics. Now, I'll expose position here. Maybe some... Camels could take that down, but we also have a massive fight in the middle. Most of the SO have gone down, so that's a good fight for True. Only champions over here. Not really sure if champions even win against Imperial Camels um, with more attack speed from the Hindustanis. Um, they killed the Monk as well, so two relics remain in the middle as a prize. Um, but Frost also remaining there with an army that one super annoying cannon gain, one we're driving to repair, spending a lot of stone on that cannon gain. And where are more monks? Two more monks are in the queue. And Shrew's monks not trying to convert the cannon gain, probably not the most important thing. But it's steadily taking away stone, so that's probably some in the long run. 22 to 32 farmers um, with a nice eco develop distribution for true but he doesn't seem to be able to break that army of mammals champions and sea judges and frost is taking his time with this you do see some docks up on the northern side bricks throw up your rocks and uh, bricks probably doesn't have your his rocks anymore <laughs> Well, the spread does, uh, the prediction does the spread automatically, right?
you only get the points of the other people that bet. True attempting to raid, but frost space is very unraidable. Now sending the front farm villagers to build a castle. Mm, and it's looking a lot better for frost again. Lol, how can you... I didn't even know you can do predictions with more than two parties. You can bet on true frost and bricks? How, how did you guys even do that? True going only... Camel. Um, hmm. Is there any other unit he could go for? Guys, what do you think? Going to work, hopefully, seriously going on in eight hours, Stefania. Eight hours is a bit much, Boomstick. <laughs> but maybe you can sneak in during your work breaks or something, as True is taking a big engagement, has taken the siege out. But does he have his own siege? He doesn't. He does not. So he cannot siege this castle. Killing off another monk. But it's 4 1 relic split towards Frost, and the pack will drive back the camels. So Ghulam raids maybe the option there. It was only possible before with two, no? When I last did predictions myself, it was only possible with two players. Um, but it seems like Frost is looking again very, very strong on Kavasan. It's kind of an odd choice for two to go Kavasan too, because they did play Kavasan in the show match before the tournament. Where Frost won it as well. Um, and he kind of did what you want to do with Saracen. Stabilize first and then take over the middle. And now he's playing it very, very um, cautious. As, uh, second cannon guy made it on that lake. Now there's Bombard cannons to defend it. But the Mamelukes are going there. So Frost will try to contest this area with that gold now. Um, or not going back. So we will see the cannon guy against Bombard cannon fight over here and I'm not really sure what true can do but he proposed the matchup so he, he must have something some idea in his head on how to how Hindustanis can do that but it seems like Frost is countering everything okay, like camels and gulams which are the only thing that comes to mind now he's adding Hussar so uh, wants to raid and not spend gold with it. Still one stone here to get. Uh, True has cannon gains on that lake. Um, taken out frost stocks. And the cannon gains here died, but the TC died too. Castle is still standing. And mill is being added. A mill instead of the TC for the stuff wanting not spend his gold. But now big engagement in the middle. Halberd is being added for the Indians. Um, to give some additional damage output, I guess, but they could also go their own champions, I think. That would be fine. The camels trying to get on the Mamelukes. Camels getting the SO, but True still doesn't have siege. Like, he's taking all these fights under two castles without uh, having the siege to siege them down. So, in the end, not much really changes in these fights. He kills some SO, yeah. He's trying to wear. Uh, Frost of gold and Frost has walled this area, so these guys can only kill the dogs. Should probably kill the dog. The dog's making more cannon guns. The dog's really annoying. So these cameras should actually go there, I feel. So the quick walls here up for true true heads added a very odd castle, I guess, to prevent raids from coming in here on the very outside of the map. And will take these dogs down. Did not take this dog down and will lose his own now. Why not add two fire ships? They already added individual categories and no fire ships at all. That's it. Frost got this again. I think it's, uh, will become 5 2 for Frost. Adjusting the overall prediction here or doing a first one. I don't remember if Antifa did one. Um, uh, it does sound reasonable. I think Frost is ahead, but we don't know what's gonna happen on the best of nine. I mean, true, like in true teams and team games, especially. Did some super crazy best of nine five zero reverse sweeps, so it is not impossible for True to cut back into his game here. 
I know he has like 4th of July celebration weekend. Maybe that's tampering it a bit, but... Um, Frost just doing... Playing very, very good here. I think Galliana being added. Fast fire would have been so much easier. Do Hindustanis get fast fire? Ah, also normal fire ship would have been easier. Uh, Drew losing his bad base. Think Frost did it once again in game two. To trying to take the stone over here has managed to sneak in some gulams into the base. Water fighting here, but you need to micro the galleons. Like with a fire ship, you wouldn't have to micro it. Um, but the bigger problem is he's losing his base. Will probably go back or have to go back once the camel army arrives. Through massing that army in the back and send, sending it in. And I think that should drive the Mamelukes back, but he might still... I don't think he's gonna lose that castle. Um, if the traps are exposed in time. Castle is down to half HP though. I might lose the castle because it's true. He will always take the fight first instead of the traps. Nope, dispatch two units towards the traps. Now you don't really want to lose castles still but the army actually doesn't do that well against the mamelukes now skirms being added skirms are better against mamelukes now um yo are not great oh skirms used to be good against mamelukes but they took that away they don't skirms don't get bonus damage against mamelukes anymore uh, true maybe not knowing about that patch but he works at microsoft he should know true would never make Boba tell his stuff else. Um, but yeah, Frost is indeed playing very well, and it's hard for Drew to do anything. And maybe not offering Frost Saracens. Like a Sith that has all uh, the units that Frost enjoys to play with. Um, it was supposed to be a trap, I guess, for early control and an early push, but that did not work out for True. I mean, it still has that 160 population, but the map control for Frost is so much better. Gold will run out. Has actually kind of run out for Frost, who... No. He has a big bunch of gold. He's just mining it with only four. And Drew has only this one tile over here. And the ones on the lakes are also empty. Got more gold control, but... <coughs> Way more efficient fights for Frost, who almost has a 2 to 1 KD. Has a lot of his own units killed, but still. And. Yeah, superior army for the Swedish player. Will take him to a 2 0 lead. Um, which is not the end of the world in a best of nine, but it's still significant. In the set. Big shots on the Skirms. And I think Cruz pretty dead. And here comes the GG call. Mr. Frost takes 2-0 in this best of nine. And Mulder thinks you should try to avoid giving Frost a Zosis. I agree. But now it's Frost picking, so we might see a Zosis, right? 90 military at this certain point and overall a 1.5 KD to a 0.6. Better economy on uh, wood and overall, but a little bit more food and gold for true, but not that much more. And that concludes game number two with Frost taking the second victory of the set. And true, starting to look in trouble. Cancel... Avoid, I uh, can still have three more, like, take two more losses without being out. Um, but lost this whole map on Kavisan here. Hey, you, Ashur! Yeah, get ready for it. We're two games in. And two really good ones as well. But Frost looking a little bit stronger. Now in for true that would be nice. And we are on Golden Swamp.
What is the APM? I don't have capture pro. But I can look it up on AV Insights. And yeah, I, I do hope that Crew takes the next one. Um, do we get... Let's look at the game one. Analysis. And... Drew has way more APM here. <laughs> Crazy. Mean APM, true with over 70, and Frost with only like 45. In game one, true had almost double the APM. <laughs> 45, what the hell? Makes me feel better, certainly, right? That Frost has this. Only 10 more APM or 5 to 10 more APM than me. That means I don't have to get faster, I just have to get better. Yeah, it's the analysis. Ah, oh, it's there. Okay. And here, yeah, also more APM for True. Frost has 40 and True has over 70. Crazy that Frost has only 45 APM. Wow. APM really doesn't win games. Yeah. If you ever needed proof, Frost having only 40 APM proves that. Uh, Britons versus Berbers! What is up here? I haven't seen that. And my first instinct is to say Berbers all the way. Quicker demos. What do Britons do against that? Maybe if you. Oh. <coughs> Imagine a longbow ball in the middle sniping all the demos. True. Believes in the Berbers, though. Pick the Berbers from the offered civilizations. And I'm super excited about what Frost will do with Britons, though. <coughs> Frost Protoss player confirmed. Um, hi, guys. How are you doing? I, I don't know too much about StarCraft. I'm sorry. Because every action he makes is the correct one. Well, exactly, right? That's, I don't know why the Kappa. Um, if you see him playing like that with 45 FPM, I think that pretty much sums it up perfectly. But we're on the swamp, everybody. And we have Britons on swamp. It's been a long while until I've seen Britons on swamp. Seven barracks for Frost and six docks. As we might see some stables over here, probably with Cavalier. Because uh, camels wouldn't make too much sense on that side. Seven camels being cute. Um, looking for if there's Cavalier for the Britons, I bet. And then... Change it to Cavalier themselves. Oh, that villager might be exposed though. Manages to get out of that trap there. Villager on the dock might get killed. It's only a half HP one. It's actually more camels. I don't really agree with that for true. Why not Cavalier? Why camels? It's not like the Britons will make anything that's good against camels. And Cavaliers are stronger against camels than they are against Cavaliers. So, camel structure is a bit weird. Peng Lima! The... One that, back when the letter was there, I played a lot of golden from Spanish words with. Ah, okay. It is, I wouldn't say it's easy to play the Siege Rangers Sith that Frost enjoys though. I actually picked a matchup that doesn't involve any Siege Rangers. Like, and this was Frost's home pick. Um, heavy demos coming out over here. Two dogs to two dogs, so pretty similar on that. To just standing these units around in the back to be annoying to deny eco development. But now we have a lot of halberdiers. Halberdiers are really good on water. Not too tragic if you lose them to demolition ships. And they are good against all other ships. Getting an attack bonus there for historical like game development reasons. Will you finally see your janitor voice? You will not fix. God, snuffles.
We don't want True to get arrested. We want him to take a game in the set. Demos from both sides. Do Britons get shipped right? Let me see. They do get shipped right. The only thing they don't get is a lead cannon again, and that isn't too much of a loss. Um, but the economy 12 to 14. So True not that much ahead. Both people have stabilized. Both people will get a navy out. True not really doing many docks though. That might be a mistake. The number of docks looking better for the Britons and Berbers do not get shipwright. So he will need to um, He will need a lot more docks I feel. His units costing also more on wood. Plus, there's production being slower, so that is an issue. Boats of the land, those were the day. Camels are good against boats. They still are, no? But not against demolition ships. Everybody's are better because they cost less. Uh, but Burbers have cheaper demos. Uh, we do have trebuchets behind demolition ships. Nice play by Frost using like demos as his SO on water, right? The big splash thingies. Um, on land might be sea challenges, but on water it is heavy demolition ships. True pulling ahead in the economy. Berbers have the better demos though, the faster demos. And that being fast is very important for demolition ships. We'll get the cannon gains here. Only one cannon gain actually. And the castle does fall. True still controlling the middle, but that was a standard um, situation in game 1 and 2 as well. True controlling kind of the map or the middle of the map first. And then Frost slowly pushing him back. And it looks like we're going to see that same thing again. Uh, prediction is up, I think. As uh, we do see Frost Lord attacking over the middle. Predictions are a little bit late today, Mods. Uh, try doing them at the start of the games, but... You guys can still bet. Um, there's always a chance. Um, right now, middle is kind of evenly split half and half. For Drew playing the sides once again. Doing some cavatures, but Frost ready for that with a group of halberdiers. And in the middle, Frost is still on the pushing side. The bombard cannons for True. Um, like, uh, Frost going for a lot of situation where he needs to be stopped by bombard cannons or something. Because yes, have werewolf trebuchets. And True is not the strongest player with Bombard Cannons. Like somebody like Nelly, Viper, Tado, I think are better with Bombard Cannons than True is. Um, True likes more the mobility centered action than the I micro my Bombard Cannons in the middle whole day things. Um, and Frost taking good use of that weakness. And it does look like Frost is taking over most of the middle. True just not making that many docks. Never get a big mass of Galleons out. Um, plus the longbows in the middle to snipe the demolition ships. Really, really nice thought by Frost. And Drew is being pushed back to his own land. Trying to be active with some camel archers over here. Has a siege workshop for maybe land push. But it's immediately being trapped down. Frost might only have to 40 APM. But he looks like he's being everywhere. How is that humanly possible? I don't know, but it seems to be possible because Frost is doing it. Mm, Drew still trying to mass some demolition ships. Um, now we have a longbow block there as well, the demolition ships defending it. Demos could get in on the longbows, that would be a nice butter boom, but it's only five demolition ships and there's the own demolition ships of Frost and only killing some champions isn't worth it, I think. Frost is about to land true and all those demos go to waste as well. Frost looking quite unbeatable i have to say and we saw like a very similar structure in the first three games of the set 
with True getting control first and Frost slowly pushing that back. Um, kind of the story to sum up all three games so far. Okay, much just could be demo. There's a demo. That's gonna kill one longbow. And True calls the GG. Frost going up 3 0. Who would have thought that? But I hope True can bring it back. And we can bring in someone as well. Get your POC champion modes ready. Because Sayu is ready. More wow, Frost unbeatable. Does look very, very strong for and very hopeful for Mr. Frost in Deathmatch World Cup 5. We have Zayu here. How are you doing, man? Hello, I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well as well. And so is Frost. Yeah, indeed. I didn't uh, see the first two games, but he looks to be really strong. Yeah, it was all like a little bit of a similar story that I just said, right? Um, it, was, uh, it was Hans vs. Magus in game one, and then game two, Hindustanis vs. Saracens. Mm -hmm. And once Frost had his death ball up, it never looked like True could do anything. Even in the Hindustani vs. Saracens, seems like yeah. a pretty even matchup to me. Yeah, but like the Seed Runner champion Mameluke ball, and True didn't find an answer to it. Yeah. He's so good with those SO. He is. And he's only 40 APM. We checked that in between the last games. And it's like True has 80 or 70 APM, and Trust is only 40. Hmm. Uh, now it's uh, True's turn to pick a mirror. I expect a Han mirror, maybe Goth mirror. Something where you can't really? micro so. <laughs> yeah, that that would make sense. Maybe he will pick something else, which is a bit more extraordinary. Maybe something like melee mirror. You think so? I think we're yep. gonna see a classic. He still has runestones, so he could do that on runestones. And we do runestones Hanwa! <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> <laughs> 25 seconds. I, I, I was just hoping to see something else because it's always exciting to see different matchups than uh, Hanwa. Uh, I, I've been kind of craving for a good Hanwa. I haven't seen a really okay. good Hanwa in a while. Frost is like the Galactus of AoE DM. It says. Cody Glock. And yes, he did lose one game against Favorite. That's the one game he lost during the tournament. Malay World would be so cool, but Dark Killer 1, we're getting the Hun War that I like. But Dark Killer 1 on Zai's side there. Are we speeding up to live? Uh, I'm already live. Okay. okay, me too. So let's take a look at the build orders. Four, five, four so far but i assume there will be more ranges coming for frost four yeah, ranges six. five racks six uh, four stables five racks six ranges and what do we have for true uh, pretty much the same story four stables seven barracks and six ranges so not much of a difference uh, barracks heavier do we have a central hill let's take a look at the map somewhat front gold for true but not too bad same front gold for frost has a very forward secondary gold and True's look a little bit more defendable. So I like True's map a little bit more. Neutral gold's one in the north and where's the other neutral gold? Uh, oh, both are in the north. Who else yeah. do have the relics that get reduced in Hardwar? I guess the situation will, I mean, the situation of the relic of the passive golds will make it that only the top of the map is being contested mostly yeah frost losing two villagers to the rush so better start for true this time but frost is still sending some paladins into rush while true bent more for the uh tark and rush which get produced faster and attack a little bit faster uh but do less damage 
Yeah, Frost getting revenge, also killing a villager or two. Now they have even two the numbers of villagers. Both kill two, and we see a market coming up for True. True going late market. Is that a sign of nerfs after the 3-0? True, no. You mean that it's late? Or did it, he's. Uh, okay, I think, no, I think it's. I mean, in Hanwha, you have to do it at, uh, at least at this stage. Oh, Frost is not doing it. But yeah, he's, I like, I he's like it. He's walling. Just... <laughs> he's walling? Yeah, he's walling with the buildings in the front. So uh, Drew couldn't get through. Oh yeah. Um, but we see the first engagement there. That hit would be really nice if Drew could get it, but he should never get it. Raids in the back being very effective. Did not stop the market, but are stopping the TC. And Drew maybe fighting too much forward here. Yeah, he has too many halberdiers in that push. He tried to overwhelm Frost because he had a better start slightly, because he will kill the villagers earlier. But he didn't have uh, the, the better army. He just had too many halberdiers. And uh, Frost on the other side is just uh, completely destroying Drew's eco build up at this point. Um, okay, top villagers are walled in, so those two Cs will get up, but yeah. KD a bit better for Frost, and he's completely denying uh, Drew's push here, so definitely not worth it for Drew. No. And uh, that action in the back, actually, they got into the wall, so we'll start one of, stop one of the TCs. True needs to commit some armies to kill this five paladins, and that will slow down his push even further. True trying to get a like, kind of awkward castle up on that forward stone there of Frost, but Frost already has a trebuchet, already has rams. Rams also coming out for True now, who still has a little bit more army, but doesn't really look like that castle will go up or stay up for long. But no. I'm a bit confused about True's build up. He built four stables, six archery ranges, and seven barracks. And he has so many halberdiers while using the market. Maybe he should have added a range in the in stable even uh, to get a bit better production on those gold units. Maybe he was assuming an earlier market from Frost? Well, he, he scouted him basically, so he could have checked for that. Okay, D, no way in favor of Frost. Obviously, a lot of halberdiers killed. Yeah, the habitus are, like, True likes to get map control early, right? I think the habitus are really useful for that. He will get the castle, yeah, up and down. No, it will go down before it goes up. But he got the castles up to the south. He's doing a very cheeky castle to the southern gold there. That Frost does not know about. It's like two tiles out of range. Yeah. I mean, he did try, to, he, or he's trying to deny Frost's eco. But the problem is that he used to market himself and he got denied for a long time so i'm not seeing well it's pretty unclear to me right now if he will be able to get up his eco in time to um basically mm. get the resources back he sold from in the market food is empty for true yeah food is empty he has 50 villagers queued but on the other on the other side frost still has 3k food and he has 100 Oh, almost 100 is rescued now, like 80. So. Yeah, now Frost has a stronger army. That castle in the south has been denied as well. Feels too optimistic now and feels uh, like the same as the previous games. I don't want to say it, but that castle also is getting deleted. So he worked, goes back. Yeah, bottom castle now being trapped as well. Topside castle will be trapped, so no gold income for Drew at this forward gold there. And he's still, he's also late on farms. Uh, like, uh, he, he's going for it now. We'll have 16 on farms very soon, but he will not be able to produce any food units in the coming couple of minutes. Can obviously still make cavatures and rams, which are <coughs> strong units here everywhere. And Keller's saying, I don't get why Drew plays so hyper aggressive that was Frost once. And that seems to be his downfall, yeah. I agree. I'm not sure. It's difficult to play against Frost. He obviously is a very all-rounded uh, and strong player. So I'm not sure what the best tactic would be to... Um, or what the best like main set and tactic is to, to face him. I can understand him going for early pushes. Maybe to try, it in the be try to win it in the beginning. But um, yeah doesn't really seem to work out. 
22 on farms now. Okay, now it's only 19 because he's trying to send some repairs, but that will go down. Sending in more ramps and big engagement, but Frost just has more army. Yeah, Tarkins might kill the ramps and then might become a good fight for true. But how many nice. of his own ramps does he have? Only one? There were a couple of halberdiers around for Frost, so he's gonna lose this fight, maybe, but uh, <coughs> KD is, or the, the fight itself was still kind of decent for him. I think this is also very, very fine for him. And now he has the paladins to back it up, because he still had the food and has the gold, obviously, so... Um, yeah. Drew is losing all his castles. Yeah. He built so many castles forward. He doesn't have any stone left, and and he has zero castles. He's building one castle now in the back. One castle to defend his eco. So raids will, would be super effective here for Frost, who himself has his eco all covered by castles. Kind of looks like game one. Um, game one, Frost was Maggers and kind of treadled up in an even smaller corner. Drew was more all over him. Um, but also couldn't break him and then true did not have any defensive castles so we're already at that stage in this one and now big army surround from frost true as only this army 44 cavalry just escaping but that is all pretty much all the army he has on the field and that is 90 army now for frost riding into the north and whew, it feels like true will need a reverse sweep here yeah i think he will call it in a second one five seconds it's true 10 seconds <laughs> 15 seconds trying to raid now uh, at least with some targets in the base of frost but yeah, he noticed but frost is getting all his well. villagers just losing three villagers that's uh four villagers okay that's fine and now the big gram push and trap push and cap archer and paladin push all the gold units in the world nothing can stop this push here there's still no dg He's, he's trying, <laughs> somehow. I don't see what he can do, but he's trying. He's completely out of his. A couple of uh, gold and, and wood, uh, stone. Uh, maybe luck, like, because... Maybe he thinks it's like his last chance here, right? Because the next map will be picked by Frost again. The Swift Mirror by Frost now. He would need to take his opponent's home map in, in game 5. I mean, I mean, his Cavalchers are running away from, from 6 Paladin here. Now they're killing them, but... I don't know. Frost is constantly pop capped. True sitting on a hundred population and being raided all the time. Yeah, it doesn't feel like he can do much. Our GG predictions have been off though. <laughs> yeah, they have been. But also all the predictions about the set have been off. I I don't think anybody like most people predicted True would win the set. I predicted Frost will win it, but nobody predicted, like, I was like, Antifa saying after the first two games, it would be a 5-2. Um, but so far we have a 4-0. Yeah, I, I would have gone for 4-2 as well, uh, sorry, for 5-2 as well. Before the set. Yeah, I said for 3 I think, for Frost. Um... But it's still yes, possible. It it's also still possible the 5 4 for True. Yep. And uh, True is no stranger to reverse sweeps. Winter's War Grand Final was a reverse sweep by Quindy. Um, but it is looking better for the Tsuno player, who is leading 4 0 in the Grand Finals. And yeah, let's hope True comes back. That was runestones that true lost. Frost indeed is such a beast. Don't have a code for the next one yet. I can see it in the lobby. What can you see? The game. You can see the game in the lobby browser. <clears throat> Spam this screw to help out true. Ragnarok is really getting good now at least. Oh, 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 what is that emblem we're seeing? The yin yang emblem. Yes, and that is the balance of the north and the south. Well, probably 
previously said, and they're not very balanced either. Um, Korean War, probably Korean won Golden Swamp. That's what happened in the semi-finals. Uh, you mean on Salt Marsh? Spam this true to help our true card finish show his photo. Oh yeah, we saw Swamp uh, already played, yeah. So it has to be Salt Marsh. And it is Koreans yeah, I mean, on Salt Marsh. Let's go, Salt Marsh in the finals. Yay. Clef, it's easy to rhyme these if you with emotes that don't exist. The hard part is finding a fitting emote. <laughs> <laughs> So, Koreans won Sword Marsh. Uh, how would you go about this, Mr. Zayu? Uh, probably typically barracks barrack start, and then it will be uh, probably not even that much on the water. I mean, towers are banned in this um, in this tournament. Yeah, and so... you can't build on the Sword Marsh. Yeah, so maybe it will actually be more of a land uh, push here from from frost including SO <coughs> and um, and traps or bombard cannons probably traps what ships would you expect on the water or do you wouldn't expect any ships yeah i will expect some ships but i i don't think it's going to be purely on water um so i'm not I'm i was not sure super if, surprised if about this the semi-finals to see only galleons and no, not a single turtle being queued. I think you start with a few turtles and then you go into SO in the middle. But SO are the counter to turtles, so maybe you jump that. But there is nothing in the middle. There is no gold. I don't... There's a lot of map control. I'm... They get elite cannon galleon. Yeah, okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. All in, baby. For whom has he? Frost. Come on! Two, take this! Spam to have our true now. You found a shoe, but you're missing the shoe. But I like the glue thing a lot. <laughs> and I want to see some turtle chips. But yeah, Korean War, very logical choice for Frost. Like, it's basically the SO war. But you don't need to micro these SO too much, so... Maybe something that true. True can yeah. uh, be easy for him. And Mars SO aren't that great in Koreans. Like, maybe more single SO? But let's see. We're in. We're off. And let's see how quickly they go to docks. Map generation is connected at the sides. That sometimes isn't the case on... Um, salt marsh, so that would speak for more land action, but it's a pretty big water and not too much uh, terrain there with the wood lines also blocking off quite some terrain. Um, you can actually pass through the left side wood line. Um, but so the SO could be ranged by our cannon guys, maybe from the water. Yeah, and we have uh, somehow a big of a bit of a different here in the build order. So Drew is going for seven barracks only, but Frost is only going for five barracks and two archery ranges. Already queuing up those heavy CA, and he probably will be trying to snipe the dogs from uh, from Drew. Yeah, no demo ships in a Korean war, right? Koreans do not even get demolition rafts, so we won't see any demo shots in this one. That way. You can't snipe the docks with demos, so maybe you want to snipe some villagers with the Cavachas. Cavachas, though, costing wood and gold, so the same resources you want to use on sea launchers and ships. As Frost is queuing Galleon, no turtle ships. Why no turtle ships? I think an initial two turtle ships are really nice to kill the Galleons. I think the turtles are just so slow. You can't just go back against uh, Onager shots. And uh, Frost is going for six uh, siege workshops, while Drew is only going for three. So there will be a lot more oranges for Frost. 
Yeah, seed workshops seem to be really important here. Frost also has these two forward islands, so it's placing castles on them. True could take this island to help out in the navy fights and give his uh, docks some protection because the candidates need to kill the castles first. Uh, but it will make it all more awkward to maneuver his ships, so it has like an upside and a downside. I think it's actually more of a downside because True has all the space to maneuver. And he can, once he has the water, con or if he should get the water control, he can easily just snipe those castles of cannon cannons. Uh, and it should be pretty easy to to hold. But he doesn't get the water control, seems like. Cross getting 24 the to 13 ships. Um, True has, how many docks does True have? 8 docks and Frost has 9 docks. Um, would probably consider adding a little bit more but the SO can kill also kill a lot of ships but it looks like more SO on the field for Frost as well yeah indeed and that's due to his large number of siege workshops it has five up uh, six sixth one going up right now and Drew only have has three uh, did you see what happened to the calf archer because uh, I don't think that uh, much was done with him well they're just streaming into the middle and dying um, True has also some cavalchers on the side now to defend on the left side and I can explain the champions for you by Elo. Champions cost food. <laughs> Everything else costs wood and gold. <laughs> That's pretty much the only reason that those are pro Koreans are really bad. So champions are the better food option. Yeah, and champions are good against ships in theory if they if they could get close and they'll just destroy them. Yeah, they're um, more of a meat shield for the ships but, though. Yeah, they're more of a meat shield here. Uh, True adding some uh, some wagons, but actually no switching to traps. <coughs> Wagon seems like a waste of resources that you need for SO and ships, I think. Can gains out for True. A little bit too optimistic. A lot of rest on those can gains, and the can gains, yeah, I can use them to snipe the SO. Um, if the SC just don't move. <clears throat> yeah, heads are too heavy on wood and your frost is already completely out of wood. True still has 5k wood. Uh, frost still uh, has a lot of more SO in the queue. SO is exchanging a lot of shots. Military overall pretty similar, but I think it's more land military for True. Who is trying some raids with war wagons. Not stopping that castle to the left though. And castles are up to... On the right, on cast up to the left of first base as well, so it looks pretty well defended there. It's that or Hussars, yeah, but Korean Hussars is not too great, that's why they are doing champions. But yeah, yeah you can also try to use this. Castles on the bottom were finished, but uh, Hussar, uh, sorry, not Hussar, uh, like war wagons are just going through and now sending the corner castle being fired from the castle, so nothing will happen there. Okay, I thought it would be more exciting. But it <laughs> Champions also getting close there. But the front, True cleared the army of Frost. Or Frost sent it back. Why though? Why did Frost send his 18 galleons back? Probably to preserve them for later as he wants to only fight with SO. But uh, that's massive SO army for Frost. I mean, I'm not exactly sure what happened to be honest. Because Frost's KD is just way better. And he's lower on res. Maybe he didn't do as many champions? I don't know. Mm, I think he spent more on cav archers, maybe? Yeah, maybe the cav archers were actually the, the biggest waste here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like him at all. Like, also played a lot of the Kujara's Japanese matchup, right? Where I think being doing cav archers with Japanese is a big mistake. Okay. A lot of people fight me, I like, think differently. I'm not a big mm. fan of cav archers on naval maps. Well, uh, Frost... Besides, you're uh, going for a weird strategy where you try to go only land or something. Frost chose this map and he opted to go for two archery ranges at least. So I suppose he trained this. So maybe uh, we should ask him what he thought about those mm -hmm. after the games. Well, if to reverse sweeps it, we can't. <laughs> well, it's oh, looking okay. very likely that we might interview Frost. But True has stabilized. Um, also has SO now. The SO ball of Frost is kind of doing nothing here on the left side. Um, just sending them in individually as 
big balls of Festo with the long range and the potential for a shot on a lot of them. Not making too much sense. Frostami just passing here, getting SO shots, getting Galleon shots. That looked like a big downside of these islands. Trying to get them behind the SO ships. More of an SO protection unit than the main fighting line in this one. Yeah, and all these ships, I mean, frost ships are now a bit clumped up between these islands. So that's why I meant by uh, it's not doesn't have to be an advantage because it's really difficult to get out of this out of this position if uh, True has the water control. And maybe he should go for land, which he is doing now. He's going for a push on left hand side with a couple of war wagons, champions, halberdiers, on a just and a castle drop on the left hand side gold. Is that Siege Workshop will call them out? The storm will be the night instant reaction from True sending back the two villagers on it as he kills a dock and might soon work on the forward castles on water. Right side, somewhat being controlled by True by some land units, still has a gold and a stone. Um, but plenty of gold for both players still, and would still be a big issue for Frost, who has 77 villagers on that. Frost, seven, uh, True has 73 on that. So in his Koreans, everything costs a lot of wood. 4k stone and used for true, that could be really helpful later on. <clears throat> and uh, better for true, right? Last games he always wasted all his stones on early attacks. So maybe thought better of it this time. We'll have it for the later stages. Yeah, this is looking pretty good for true. He has a lot of resources. Uh, map control is pretty equal, I would say. On the land side, a bit more map control for frost. But on the water, definitely better for True, I would say. Because um, he's just such an easy time defending his open space. And he's also adding some cannon galleons, or at least a couple, one or two, and uh, traps as well to get rid of the siege workshops and castle in the middle. Uh, but now splitting up his army, they're actually losing a couple of ships here. Oh, maybe he's still pretty equal. Frost did get raided on the right hand side though, losing a couple of villages, villages there to the champions. And now sending his own land units there to defend against that push from, from True. Who is pushed back in the middle, so pretty even game here. Both players taking hits on every at every side basically. And it's a back and forth in the position. Uh, Frost has more land control now. Um, by the way, you passed 50 viewers, which was my goal for the finals, so thanks everybody for coming. Black Sky flexing with his puntos, and I hope Drew, Drew gets us a longer final, because uh, a lot of people here, right, want to see more games, but Drew is being pushed back on water now. Yeah, he is. Uh, he doesn't have any SO to defend against this water push, but he has more ships, right? So, should be able to, to go for it once he has some SO at his disposal. He still has so many resources. So maybe he's letting Frost come a bit then to take a decisive fight, but we'll lose his dogs. Um, hmm, losing all his dogs though. Like, yeah, he's making some more at the left side. Trying to push back there, eating big SO shots. I like, guess yeah, this I mean, is a 10k stone challenge. Yeah. <laughs> 5k stone challenge. You start with 5k I, I stone only, so 5k stone challenge makes a lot of sense. I think losing the, the uh, dogs there is not too big of an issue. He can just rebuild them in the left hand side. We have some control. Um, maybe also at the right hand side, add uh, two or three more dogs there. Uh, but he's pop capped. I mean, he's just adding SO and will probably now go for an SO attack from the front while sending his ships around from the right hand side. And um, yes, you're not Husa, guys. coordinating that too well right now. Okay, all the sending in the Halberdiers right now, who should do a lot of work. But the uh, honor just right now being cleared up by the Hussars. Yeah, a lot of so to that. Could also think of deleting some villagers with all the rest he has. Probably doesn't need 10k wood. And, and the ships are not fighting. He's just <coughs> patrolling with the ships on the right hand side. Now losing his castle and he's popped on 185, so he desperately needs to add some houses or castles. I mean, as you said, he has 5k, 5k stone, so. He should use that somehow. And 10k wood. So, I mean. Yeah, there's forward gold to, close to the shoreline as well. That could get denied. 
Um, and his back golds are used. So that's the only one, only gold that Drew is on. So we yep. need to use his resources to defend that right now. He still has some in the in the in the bank, but on the left hand side, the gold is completely in in Frost's um, map control, and the right hand side not being contested by anyone right now. Um, and, and Frost still has some at his back as well, so. This will be pretty even. Stables getting clear. Champions will probably die to the SO as well. Ah, getting some SO kills. Um, and in the middle. Wow, a lot of war wagons being added by Frost. Yeah, those are pretty tanky against the ships, but not so good against the Harbadiers and the SO. And now Frost doing the SO micro here at the front, killing. Oh, okay. Only one, one to one. One for one should be fine for true in this position. Um, yeah, he's not pop capped anymore. Great, 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 great SO shots here from true though. Killing a lot of army from Frost. Oh, a lot of dead SO. So he's getting some control back on the right side water, adding more docks there. Um, Frost still controlling the left side water though. Um, but Drew was still mining that important middle gold there and might start to fight over the red side gold now. Yeah, I mean, he should definitely try to expand on the right hand side, I think. He still has 5k, 5.5k stone even now in the bank. So he's also have has dogs on the right hand side, so defending there would be reasonable. And uh, Frost has his traps on the left hand side. Look at this frost cutting the forest in order to send the Hussars into that unprotected eco there on the right side. What yeah, a genius nice play. Move. And there's no castles. Why, why aren't there any castles in the, in the farms? Um, I, I don't really understand it. No, me neither. One castle doesn't cost too much of your stone pile. Mr. True. Yeah, like pushing back on the left three. side though. <laughs> Whoa, what a flex. Maybe he doesn't need yeah. it, yeah. That will do a good fight for True. And it's only Korean Hussar, they're not too good. Yeah, it seems like Frost focused on the right hand side completely here. Completely missed micro or didn't micro at all his, his army on the left hand side. Yeah, even that's three trebuchets that are not moving even. He lost his complete army without killing. Maybe he killed like five units of, of True there. And uh, the Hussars, uh, I mean, yeah, they did kill some villagers, but. Not we had enough villagers people. anyways, like, I think it's completely fine for True to lose some villagers. I, I thought about he should delete some, so... I think bigger, having a decent army on both sides would be really nice for True now. And with uh, more pop, he could afford that. You don't, you can easily, uh, like, fight two sides at the same time with Koreans, pop space-wise. Because your armies are very pop efficient. Um, water, like the fleet in the middle, still full control for true. Could move in on the gold, but the gold is empty now. Um, Frost still taking some gold, now taking over the right side gold. True not pushing on the left side. Mm, fully controlling, con being on the active on the right side, and still has these nine villagers in the TC, which were there for ages. And, and he's hmm. still. He still didn't build any more castles to defend his eco um, on the left or the right hand side. And he's, I mean, if you have a look at the resources, True has plenty of resources. He can do whatever he wants, basically. Uh, while Frost is sitting on the edge a bit, he is low on, on, uh, on, on gold and even doesn't have a lot of wood and uh, food as well. And the stone is completely out for him. So. Uh, I'm not Let's sure if he honor. maybe is taking the, this a bit too carefully here, or not not carefully enough, I mean. Thanks a lot for the three ground. months, Maldar. He's losing ground, and I think it's unnecessary to lose ground here. Yeah, I, I don't quite understand it. It's all, like, not too much happening. Single SO fighting single SO. True cleared up the middle. Um, it's the only one with ships right now, as ships are kind of out of... Uh, fashion um in the 30 30 minutes 30 yeah, look how 30s. 
Look, <laughs> look how much he lost on uh, on the right hand side now. The wood got cut completely, and he added one castle to the north of his food eco and one on the left hand side now. So at least a bit of defense, but uh, looking still looking pretty good for Frost, who has all the wood in the world uh, to chop. And cruise out of gold with this cube. Like it still has a little bit cute, but. Uh, Frost can still take the right hand side gold and still taking gold on the left as well. Now, don't tell me he has uh, gold in his base again. Okay, it doesn't. At least not this time. But it's he has the two neutrals. It's, it's, it's been, it's been uh, chipped away at. Yeah, right next to his. Oh, yeah. Um, One for right, right with the main base. Yeah. Oh, big fight though. True. Frost time for fish Hussar. payment back. <laughs> But not being too successful. War wagon saw getting Spending. lost, but maybe can clean up the SO here. Losing a trap is Frost. And SO engagement's kind of better for True. But a lot of one for ones. True can still sell 5k stone. You kind of never want to sell stone, but yeah, he has stone for wood control in the late game. And now he's adding castle on the right hand side here. Yeah, I like Trying it. to get a push on this gold. And uh, Frost switching sides now. He's going fully on the left hand side. Look at all the Union streaming there. Yeah, 50 has some. Yeah. Ah, well. I but the right hand seems more important, no? There's still to make the gold there. Kind of giving up yeah. on that. Plus a lot I, of I, wood uh, if like, the two castles fall for uh, Frost. I mean, so there's only some taking wood. wood at the left side now. Uh, still has some in the back though. Yeah, it's, it's still enough wood for for true. He also has a big bank, so. Or yeah, that 7k him. wood will come in handy for him. <laughs> a lot of wood is being cut. Frost is really is try harding this game five when he's four zero up, cutting all the wood there for true. But I think he also wants to fight with Onagers on an open plane because he had does have the Hussa. Beautiful attack round from Tri from True. Mm, trap somehow did fall on the right side, so Frost holding there. Big fight on the left side. Yeah, both players out of gold now have to fight with their remaining gold units, which are SO and traps mostly, and some war wagons for Frost. Yeah, these war wagons, I'm, I'm kind of doubtful if you want to spend your last gold on war wagons, because they well, die to SO. Yeah, they die to SO, they also die to a big number of halberdiers and uh, maybe champions. You know, the raids coming in for Frost, who is really trying to lock down True in his base, so he doesn't have any wood to uh, to chop, I guess. But there is still wood to chop for 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 true in the back of his base and he still has a big bank as i said so no worries right to now repair that him. castle will repair it castle goes down for frost gold being fought over on the right stone now a little bit taken for true on the left and castle should stay up with that number of villagers repairing will cost him some stone though trebuchet is trying to kill that trap and we do have so move again so trebuchet for frost probably going down and we have abelist here Interesting. Yeah, I mean, when there's no SO, Arbalists are obviously really strong. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there will always be one or two SO on the field by both of the players. Um, Should be right. You can sell and do that. Yeah. So, so I think like True's plan to keep on or hold on to the uh, stone um, will benefit his plan. His uh, plan now to just push with castles all over the right hand side. Mm -hmm. I assume at least that's what he's going to do. Maybe he's just controlling the gold for now, but at some point. Yeah, Maybe what an amazing forward. Salt Marsh game. <laughs> I love that the best game of the final so far is on Salt Marsh, and yeah, really beautiful game. Yeah, True, now that castle tree, third castle. Yeah, you can still do uh, four more castles, so that will be a big push. But uh, even even if it's successful, it doesn't mean that Frost is out of this game. He can just relocate his eco from the right hand side to the bottom and the left hand side, where there's a lot of places place to build farms and uh, also chop wood. So mm. that will not win him the game just by pushing castles on the one side. 
But we'll gain some gold there. Still significant gold in that mine. Frost uh, kind of pushed through off the gold stone on the left side again. But uh, true now with more army there. So should get the stone control back. This, also this game can warriors. take away. Two trebuchets now. Third trebuchet could also fire for Frost. So might push one castle back here. As True invested more army on the left side. That might cost him his right side push and the gold. Which would be a huge problem for True. Yep. Can yeah, we give really the game to True Frost? We want a game 5. <laughs> I don't want <laughs> Frost to give any games, but yes, I desperately want a game 5, game 6. Yeah, I mean, he really tried to secure that, that gold with three castles, or at least let's say two castles there protecting the gold. Um, but then he didn't really defend it and he opted for defending the left hand side, where there's just a bit of stone to uh, to chop, uh, to mine, I guess. 200 gold and as well, but yeah. Yeah, okay, right. But that's that's really far in the back, so that's not really contestable for true. And he's gonna this lose point. his push there as well. Yeah, yeah and two castles lost now on the right hand side. While this push on the left hand side this did nothing. I mean he only yeah. defended. Doesn't even get the stone right now and won't kill that castle skirmish is now coming out for frost. Usually a unit that true is the lover of. And all the villagers will go down in the gold. Still 850 left on that right hand side gold. Pussar streaming in. Should be able to. It's only skirmish that's an SO. That will be a nice thing for true. Hmm. What is, what is that, So they're uh, really bad. <laughs> What is that dog on the left hand side by Frost in the little pond? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to go for fishy call. True could do that in the back. But he has farms. Way more farms for Frost actually. Frost is on 75 farmers. Maybe preparing a champion switch? Hmm. Maybe. Selling it. But he's only going for. Or he's also going for a lot of Hussar. Which uh, True is not doing. He's only going for champions and halberdiers. Only a couple of hussars. Mm, three war wagons on the risk. Very much gold investment on them. And might lose an SO here too. Try to whoa, house block it in. But I think we fall nevertheless. Well, it's the Korean hussar. But yeah, it falls. Yeah, very stalemate right now. Um, Frost was able to push back True's gold push on the right hand side. Who is still at 10k wood, but uh, the wood he can chop is running out now. Bit in the base and bit on the right hand side, but left hand side wood now almost completely chopped through. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm curious to see where his next push attempt will be. He still has stone for three more castles, so will he go for the right hand side or rather the left hand side to gain control over some more wood patches? Two. The bank still favors true a lot, right? Map control favors trust. Yep. And yeah, Green he needs to make a push soon for wood. Population for true only 150, as it is 200 for frost. So that's the worrying part. Even though he got the score lead now, but score lead always a lot of raises, a lot of. Um, the resource in the bank, yeah, the resource in the bank are maybe main contribution there. But now another trebuchet for Frost, it is at half HP, you should consider repairing it. Okay, there come the villagers to repair it. Oh, no, they're actually going to gold, two of them are going to gold, and let's see if that Cedronja can take out the trap. Yep. And Ooh. even killed the other Ooh. SO from Frost. Oh, yeah, the nice champions one. are just super strong. I mean, champions yeah. are just killing Hassa, just killing, killing skirmishers, killing Halberdier, they're killing everything. We didn't talk about relics at all. It is 3 to 2 in favor of True, so not the biggest split, but maybe a little tiny bit. Of
and to adding more farms. So I expect both to go into the direction of 100 farms champions soon. But uh, Frost a bigger believer in the Hussa line. With uh, Koreans, no bloodlines, no armor, and no no last armor, no last attack. So they are only 9 attack and uh, 4 pierce armor, 2 melee armor. Really not the greatest Hussars. Like the worst Hussars of the game, actually. Yeah, they, st they still have House Pendry, man. Give him that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, champion push now on the right hand side, but there's just They're one on a from Frost, and just killing. This this one on a judge just killed like thirty oh. champions. Or something. And I missed it. And I... That means that push is dying out. Has the wood situation locking a little bit of wood here, and to the left side it's now all empty. And the last trees in the base for true. So if Frost can hold the position that he's in right now, then he just needs to hold 7.6k more wood and he wins the game. <laughs> yeah, that, that will be the plan. There's so much wood for Frost to, to chop. It's like maybe, I don't know, 40k wood he can still chop. I so. would kind of like Frost to like migrate his wood choppers to cut the outside wood wall. Mm, yeah, kind of, especially at the top left, right? Top left and uh, maybe the right hand side too, but but he, I think he's actively trying to deny True's wood on the right hand side for now, so mm -hmm. I guess that's fine. And he's just holding, trying to hold on the mm -hmm. left. That's hand a side great raid. The push. Yeah, now killing a lot of farmers from True here, and it's looking yeah, very, very effective close, raid. And yeah, that that castle falls, that wood is out, and True can't get to population. Only 140 pop. Frost all over him. Holding the castle for now, but he's not repairing it as all the way. Just go back. He needs to snipe that trebuchet. I feel like that castle might fall, and that would be so good for Frost to potentially take the 5 0 victory in the Ragnarok Grand Finals. Would be a shame, but it would be promising. For the DM side to maybe get a new World Cup champion soon. Ah, definitely possible. Very strong contender, obviously. Yeah, push uh, stopped for now, so castle is still up here for true. But yeah, the wood control is just just not there. And it's all castled, right? There's a castle on the right side, castle on the left side. Yeah, the top on the left side is without a castle where True could try to chop. So and maybe we'll see a new Mr. There. Wood Control here. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, Frost, like not that the early map control isn't really normally his thing, but he's so hard to push against. Because uh, he uses his 40 APM really, really well. <laughs> Yeah, Drew now trying to get the gold on the on the right hand side at least, denying a couple of farms from Frost, but still, um, if he doesn't get some wood very soon, this will be over in very short time. Yeah, Frost, two trebuchets on that castle to the left. It doesn't look like Drew is able to kill those trebuchets, so might even lose some more control on the left side, which is his close was his closest side to get to more wood. Yep, another Hussar raid going in. Traps even killing the castle now. Yep, castle going down. And yeah, this is really tough. Really tough for True Hill. Also has a lot of villagers garrisoned in the back of his base. So those are not working. Hmm. Castle not even being fully repaired on the left side. Uh, still somewhat that he's chopping there and he's getting the gold. Frost is really on the limit though. Look at Frost res. He has yeah. a total of <laughs> 500 res. <laughs> Drew has a total of 10,000 to <laughs> uh, It's like 10,000, right? But still, the bank is the bank is not helping you if you have enough res uh, resources to sustain your uh, position in the push on, on both sides of the map. So, uh, as long as he's able to, to sustain oh, that, but then... Wanted uh, to shoot? On it, just not shooting. Could have had a nice shot there. Not the greatest shot. 
Um, also not the greatest shot. On it of false. True. Made a little bit of headway, but I think he's getting cleared by the scurves again. Also four units fighting the seat workshop. Not the best thing that they could do right now. And Drew's taking off the gold on the right side again. So much suspense I can't handle it, says by now. Yeah, it's really, really intense. This game 5. When was the last time True got inside of some part of Frost Space? I don't think he ever tried r raiding. Like, he probably minute 15 or something. Yeah, and now Ooh. look at the right hand side raids from Frost all over the place with his Hussar and there's no defensive units from True because True is trying to push on the left hand side to get control over the castle. wood line with a castle but those Hussar are just killing everything right now there in True space. 114 villagers, some champions, some halberdiers coming for the defense though. Castle also doing some good work. There's no siege to back that up for Frost but he's taking a little bit of gold. Didn't look that devastating, right? Not that many Vilkels, two Hussars will shortly die here. I think True defended the left side. Now can he get up the castle? He has five villagers building the castle. Is there any siege being produced? No siege being produced for True. Uh, siege workshops are still standing. Can't queue anything with his resources though. So won't be able to stop that castle. And True may be living on a little bit. If he can secure control on the left. I, indeed, I, I expected the Hassa to do way more on the right hand side, but somehow Drew managed to uh, get all of the villagers, in, or, or at least most of the villagers, into his castle just at the right time and even repaired his castle so long that he uh, was able to stream in new units. And at the same time, just rushing up the castle on the left hand side and now is chopping wood there. So this is actually not the game. might just have nice turned at this now. Point. Right? Ah, the castle is under siege. Who needs to keep that castle up? That would be super decisive. Yeah, and he's below 1k stone now, so... Uh, he has a lot of a lot. pop on the right side now that's not there to defend this. Forward on the left side, if he loses the trebuchet, there's nothing to kill the castle anymore. Does have an SO in the siege workshop. That pops out on the Arvalis, so won't be able to kill the trebuchet. Arvalis does still there for Frost. How can he afford that? I guess with a little bit of gold from the right side. So yeah, do not able to kill the trap right now. Not repairing his siege auditor. Oh, but it didn't work. And he might lose the castle again. There's also a lot of um, stone to repair that. Two trebuchets out there for Frost now. So I think the left side castle is about to fall. Still 4k wood in the bank, but the wood is getting down and these villagers might not chop wood for long as the castle on the left side, that true build where I thought the game could have turned in his favor, has fallen again. That means all these villagers are exposed. And with that castle being killed, I favor frost position again. Yeah, absolutely. And look at what he's doing now. Popping out that siege on jar. And now he's just destroying all the trees. And there will be no trees to chop, even if True gets this position back. So now he yeah, has to even push even further, and he only has one castle, stone for one castle to build. And more army there on the left side. Now the army coming over from the right side, but coming over too late for True, I feel. Great, as all shot mm -hmm. again. I think so many units. I think you're a little bit ahead. Oh, am I? I'm at 110.44. Uh, I'm double speed, I should be there in no time. Maybe the in-game is slightly faster than Capture H. Yeah, I think so. I just put it to 1, so in case the GG comes in, it doesn't speed up. Um. Yeah, but Frost now won the fights there, defended that, has the Arbalet Master to protect the traps. True completely out of wood, could still get a little bit at the right side, but is trying to go to gold there and being denied. And yeah, now that's a good champion mask, but the problem is the 10 Arbalists, are, well, the 14 Arbalists are really coming into play now. Skirmishers not firing at the Arbalist, uh, Hussars joining in, so distracting the Skirms from that Siege Ronager. Will get he, killed, but that means the Arbalists survive. Yeah, those Arbalists did a lot of kills on the champions. And now, just unit reproduction will be there for 
both of the players, and I think uh, True might have a bit of a defender's advantage here, coming in with more units. But uh, Orbelus and SO comp from Frost is just really strong at this point in the game. Yeah, so Trebuchet is being kept alive now, trying to retreat to Trebuchets, which means they will lose armor for a little bit. But not really that much there, probably when he saw the SO try to pack them, didn't want to lose them to the Sea Journager. Mm, still Habit is on the field for True, spending his wood, but Frost now up to the 2k woodbank. So woodbanks are even now, and True lost his wood bank advantage with the wood control advantage being in favor of Frost since half an hour or so. And C. John Joe will fall as well. The Hussar's doing really work for Frost to cut the lumber camp with the two Trevish saves. So that's 100 wood gone again. And better fights for Frost. Uh, that army will be cleared. The Arbalist doing so, so much work. Yeah, indeed they are. She's try just trying to keep them alive and produce the one onager as a at a time with his gold that's coming in from the relics. Small raid from True on the right hand side with a couple of halberdiers and champions, but is just easily stopped with uh, his own champions there, um, not really using anything. First just seems unplayable in this series, new barbarian in the AI confirmed. Yes, the programmers did a very, very good job, Polo. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, uh, Age of Empires has been figured out. Um, we're like chess now. Yeah, and the food's now completely empty for Frost, uh, for True, I mean. He has zero in the bank. Um, did I say food? I meant wood. Wood yeah. completely out. <laughs> you meant wood. You said wood. Uh, yeah, just like the seven trees or so we chopped at the right hand side, left hand side, no trees anymore. Uh, completely controlled by Frost, and I think we will see a GG in uh, well, a couple of maybe maybe minutes maybe there will actually be one more castle push by true who has enough stone to do one more castle uh, frost even buying wood now to deny uh true the prices and true says gg congrats 5-0 very dominant victory amazing game five um, don't think it fully legitimates the 5-0, but Frost is the new Ragnarok champion. Well played to the player from Sweden, Frost. Finally, taking a 1v1 tournament title. I don't think he has one yet. We will probably have a forum interview in shortly. True says, GG, congrats. What a game, Mr. Zayu. That was a great game, 5. Really strong performance by Frost, just holding the map with all he, the rest he had available. I think at, at no point in the game beside the start, he was above like 3k rest in total. So he was just spending all his rest to main keep like, to maintain his position on both the left and the right hand side of the map, keep uh, True in his base and slowly burning through his massive wood bank that he acquired. The wood income 71k to 55k in favor of Frost. Also had way more food and more gold in the end with that side control for longer drew didn't manage to make it happen with his stone bank even though that helped him out later and drew being second place in ragnarok also not bad but probably hope for more puntos in this series frost showing up in a very very good shape right before um, the qualifiers start for the next world cup professor frost Hello. Hello. Can you hear me fine? And congratulations. I can hear you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Oy, oy, oy. You seem unbeatable, man. No. Congrats. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think some games I I'm just lucky. I have so I have the margins on my side. So yeah. Not unbeatable. But very well, well played. Um, how does it feel to be the Ragnarok champion? Oof. Ah, it feels good, man. <clears throat> I practice so much for it, so it, it feels very good that it paid off. Is this actually your first 1v1 tournament title? Yes. Uh, yeah. I lost the uh, Masters of Arabia final, the first one. And 
second one, I think I finished third. So yeah, this is the first one. Well, glad it was in the tournament I was able to host. And congratulations, really, really strong play throughout all the tournament from you, I think. You only lost one game, right? You lost one game to favorite that Frank's for. That was yes. it, right? Yes. Wow, man. But it could have been more, for sure. <laughs> could have been more. It didn't look like it, so I'm back. So congratulations from my side as well. Very ah, strong performance. Hello, side. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, congrats. Let's talk quickly talk about the games of the set one by one, if you're fine with that. Sure. Sure. So the first one, um, you picked the Magyars and Drew picked the Huns. So yeah. was it clear to you from the outset that I just need to survive the start and turtle a little bit? Or how did you I, think about it? I did some training with like Tweep and Polar. And uh, we kind of figure out if you can just survive with Magyars. They're probably the best series, because you can just spam the Magyar Hussars if you survive. So that was the plan with game one. Just survive and use the Onagers. <laughs> use the Onagers, yeah, the Onagers killed so much. You had a beautiful choke point there that True went in. Was that when you felt like you had the, when you were killing that army in that little choke point next to your base? Was that when you felt like you had game one? Not really, because I didn't get like my form number up, so I think I was stuck at like 40 for a long time. So it didn't feel too good. But then eventually I started to get the numbers up, and then it became more sta stabilized. So yeah. After a while, it felt good. <laughs> yeah, and it was also like I felt like the first three games were quite similar in the way that True took map control early, placed a lot of forward castles on you. And you like had a death ball army, and that's like generally what people think of as your playstyle, I guess. Um, that slowly pushes like then the rest of the map back. Was that how you felt, or was the pattern of these games as well, or how you like to play in general? Or yeah, at least the first uh, three games, as you said, they were kind of similar. As you, yes, as you said, like I, we took the map, and then I was I was forced to push back because it took uh, well, it took the relics in the first game. Second one, I got the relics actually, so that was nice. And yeah, I'm I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Yeah, second game was the Cavasan right? And yeah, yeah, that looked yeah. very dominant as well with him not getting the relics in time. And I don't know, like, do you think if you would have had Hindustanis, do you think he, he could have done anything? It looked like the camels didn't really work and the Gulams didn't really work, and I couldn't have really think of anything else. Uh, I don't know actually with Hindustanis. I, I thought he was going to like raid and stuff on the sites, and I, I was like, nah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that with Hindustanis. So I rather play Saracens with uh, one of yours, and that worked. That worked. All right, Sai, so you wanna talk about ask about game three because I think that's where you, what are you watching again, right? Yeah, I think so. So game three was the Berbers versus Britons. So that was a matchup you offered. So yes. what are your thoughts on this on this matchup? I mean, you seem to dominate a lot with Britons there, but uh, maybe like you can talk us a bit through what were your tactics for for both of the sifs. Uh, if you play Britons in that matchup, I think you have to go just helps and then just try to get some docks up so you can get those demos. So you don't just get overrun because Berbers have Treadmill Crane, so they're just faster overall. And if you manage to survive with Britons, they have like ship rights, so I think their navy gets created faster, and they're also cheaper. And then you also need to be careful with all raiding, like behind your base, if the enemy comes in with Hussars or something. So you yeah, you're good. For that. Your gold positions seem to be really good in this uh, on this map, and you also put some castles there to, deny, uh, to, to uh, defend. Uh, all your back very very nicely so very well played um, at that part do you think uh, camels by him was a mistake uh yeah i think so I, I think i would have done cavalier because you just you just want to go all in with berbers in this matchup so uh. you might as well go the more heavy approach with cavalier yeah i see yeah, we were I talking agree. about that as well yeah. so so do you think britain's 
favors your playstyle more than on this uh, matchup? Uh, maybe, but I would have preferred playing Berbers in this matchup because I've, I've trained, so I, I know how I would have played with Berbers. But yeah, it's hard when you only get one chance as Kellen here. So you have to like improvise. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, very, very well played um, in any case. I like demos, uh, your SO on water. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think that's I think that's my thing, I guess. Something. <laughs> oh yeah, it wor it works for most times, but yeah, have to be careful. Have to be careful. All right, do you have any more questions for game three, Otter? I don't. I will move on to game four, if you want to start it off. Sure. So let's go for game four. So game four was a Hans War, which Otter correctly predicted, um, being played by True there. Um, true, he did get the market, very late market as, uh, as well, so not really denying any build-up time for uh, True. Um, it still somehow seemed that he did have no chance to push your base at all. He tried to do so with an army advantage, but you just had a way better KD. Um, do you, what do you think went wrong for him in this game? I think I managed to mass more units at the fights we had. Like I had more units active in the battle, so and eventually that kind of paid off. So his market didn't really matter, and then I just kept my cab watchers alive, and then yes, I managed to push back eventually. But usually I, I die with hands, so I'm very happy that this actually worked for once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really, yeah. I'm not really, I'm not really known to win hands war, so yeah, this was really nice. Yeah, I think yeah. you played that very well. Um, I think he had too many halberdiers uh, in his push. He made seven barracks, six ranges, and four tables. And um, after he built the, the, the market, he didn't really add any uh, any buildings there um, to, to support his gold army. So I think he just made too many too many halberdiers. Um, yeah. A really great uh, defense by you. Also, also you took down all his castles that he built forward and, and on your bottom and so on. So he was left with only one castle later on. Um, yeah, so could, there I, was like no defense for him. I could feel how, how he tried to surround me. Like I saw all castles like go, go, almost going up around me. I was like, oh shit, I gotta have to do something now. Yeah, yeah. great defense and yeah, great play. Well played indeed. And then the most like the, I think for me the game was the set was game five, right? Oh yeah, the game five was tough. Jesus, I, I thought I had him for a long time, but then he, he just kept on spamming units. I was like, how how can how can he do that? He should be out of wood or something. He had like 10k wood and 5k stone left for most of the second half oh, of the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it never it never ended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he tried to put off the 5k stone challenge in this game. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but the map generation. So, so a couple of things I want to talk about here. The map generation was very interesting because there were two islands in the middle of the lake, um, which were a bit more on your side, and you built castles on there very early on. What do you think about about the map generation? Uh, I think if, if from a defensive perspective, I I had a better map. I think because I could just like protect those islands and he would never uh, really be able to push into my base mm. but they were so, also kind of blocking if you wanted to go forward yeah so, so that's that's right point. that's what happened indeed so my argument actually was that true might have the better map because he has more space to uh, control his units around the water dodge your mangonels and then take down your castles with um, cannon galleons once he got the, uh, the, the water control uh, but but he never got the water control so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But it, it was a really tough, really tough situation that they're trying to go forward. So eventually I had to like force myself to go out, out to the site, which I didn't want to do first. But yeah, I had no choice, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, so so what are you think, uh, your thoughts about the calf archers in, in Koreans? Well, you had uh, two archery ranges, but uh, I, I felt like those calf uh, those, um, arch uh, those archers that you did didn't really do anything. I was going to try to snipe villagers with them, but yeah, as you saw, I don't think they got a single one. So yeah, that was a waste. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> waste of, uh, good. <laughs> wood and, and 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 gold and and this game I think I've said it before, but you did you seem to have not more than three k total res um, over the the entire course of the game after the start, obviously, uh, while he was sitting on a comfortable ten k fifteen k res in total. Um, but you just controlled the map and never lost position on the left and right hand side. Um, yeah, I'm so that was I'm crazy. I'm trying to stay at 200 pop for as much as I can, if it's possible. So I guess I spend more resources because of that. Yeah, probably. And also, be, I'm, I'm maybe a bit slower also on resources, like getting the villager up and all of that. That could also, also be confusing. There was also a question in chat from Antifa. You could have also gone for a big push in game five. Uh, why didn't you do that, I guess? Uh, game five, you could have also gone for big push bash boss through middle, right? Question mark. Uh, I guess I could have, but I was scared of his onagers because they were destroying uh, my army. Like, as soon as I went forward uh, from those islands, he just went out with his onagers and just totally destroyed like my navy and my onager so it didn't work that's why yeah korean on is just maybe better in, in seeing smaller numbers than in as a ball as a yeah ball. i feel like if you clump them up uh, you just lose like 10 to kill like two onagers so that's not really a cost efficient fight hmm. Yeah, and, and, and as the game got later, you were also chopping away a lot of the trees from uh, True on both sides. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So we saw you going for that, but we also saw, like, he still had 10k wood, so plenty of time for him to defend. And as you said, you were probably wondering how he was still able to pump out so many units. Yeah, I was uh, so surprised. So, yeah. I was so surprised. It took a while. He also had, uh, as I said, he had 5k stone in his bank. Um, so maybe when you raided him uh, at his farms, you noticed that he didn't have any castles there to protect because he still had a lot of stone. Do you think he could have done something with, with an even bigger castle, castle push at one of the sides? Yeah, I guess he could have gone for the right side, maybe. Try to push forward. But also the left side had more wood, I guess. That would have been better. Probably. Yeah, there was more gold still on the right hand side, so probably that's why he went for the right hand side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he he did go for three castles there, but you just uh, just pushed him back easily. It seemed like at least, um, and then he was down to three k stone. Um, so maybe I'm not sure. Maybe he could have, could have committed a bit more on his stone push there, but but not sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very yeah, so well played to fend all yeah. that off. I have like one. I have another question. Like we looked at, there was questions in chat, so we looked at the APM, and uh, Drew has like over seventy APM for most of the games that we looked at, and you had like forty. <laughs> How do you do that? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm trying to play as fast as I can. <laughs> I can't play faster. <laughs> That's why <laughs> I have play to fast take enough. Good <laughs> I guess I have to take good fights. That's the key for me to survive because I a lot of players are faster than me. Um, that's what I think. So, yeah, I'm trying to do my best. <laughs> I can't play faster. You want to say something inspiring to all of us was, that are sitting at our 30, 40 APM and we, we'll never get that fast? Something inspiring for the youth, maybe? <laughs> play, play CBA. Or for the it's old good. people. <laughs> play CBA. It's good for micro. I think everyone can learn it. So everyone has a chance to become a better player, if you ask me. Just play, play whatever you can, really. But mainly CBA. Good for micro. <laughs> okay, so people in the DM Discord will be ha very happy about that statement, I believe. No, they're going <laughs> to hate me for saying that. But yeah, well, that, that's my opinion. There's lots of this CBA community, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, congratulations, man. So you're the Ragnarok champion now, and that much World Cup is about to start, qualifiers start next week, main event in September. Um, yeah, what's your goal? Are you gonna Oof. win it? Nah, no, 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 no. My goal is to hopefully win a series. That's my goal. To win a I'm series? Sorry. Come on! Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. We're not gonna brag here or get uh, overconfident. We have to be stay on Earth, okay? We need to be humble. <laughs> You are so humble. I don't want to <laughs> just won a tournament. You're saying you're only winning no, no, first no, round. No, 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 no. 
We need to stay humble, okay? <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm going to keep on training with the, our, my clan mates. And we help each other, and that's good. We help each other, give each other tips and, uh, to what to do and stuff. And that's that's really nice. That's really nice. All right, yeah. Um, if you have any last comments, want to shout them out more or something, feel free. Congratulations again. Thanks for organizing this tournament, Otter. And also, I th it was Black Black Sky, also, right? Yes. And, and Black Keller. Sky, me and Keller was admining it. Paula was doing a little bit. Oh. Yeah. Th thank you, guys. Thank you, all, all of you. It's it's been a really good tournament, and yeah, I look, I'm looking forward for World Cup now, to do my best. And I hope to see you also doing good, Otter, and also you, Sayu. I want to see you in the main events. Ah. Uh -uh. Sayu and you will, uh, Sayu will probably make it, but I won't. Uh, you never know, man. You never know. Uh, we'll you, try, we'll try our best, both of us. Let's see what happens. If you do your best, you have no excuse to lose. So, yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, man. And congrats again, Sayu. You have a last question? Thank you, Otter. Thank you, Sayu. No, I think I already asked all my questions about the games. So, congrats again and uh, see you soon in World Cup. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you, Frost. Good luck. Bye. Also, thank you for co-casting, Zayu. Thank you, Todd. You were like became the main co-casting star during Ragnarok. Really well played. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot for being all those hours also spending that endless game with me. <laughs> and kind of main <laughs> casting that never-ending marketplace game between Brew and Favorite. Really, really yeah. good job. Thanks a lot. I mean, it only ended because they decided to end it. Uh, and I still only get like, got like four hours of sleep that night. Um, <laughs> but it was very fun. It was great. Yeah, very well done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sayu. Yeah, you're welcome. Anytime. I have time. <laughs> I'm going to leave you now and join up with Black Sky for a little thank you speech, I think. Sure. Go for it. And have a good time. Thanks, Thanks for having me. And see you soon. Black Sky! Hey you! We are catching Black Sky live somewhere in France on vacation. Oh yeah. Real life, yes. I'm on vacation. Uh, he's on vacation, Europe but he's still doing Orga stuff for tournaments. Uh, well, yes. Do you hear me clearly, by the way? Yes, I can hear you very well. I hope uh, uh, you can chat uh, to too. Alright, well, first of all, thank you to everyone for watching, for playing, and to you, Otto, for casting, and all the cool casters. Uh, there are some others, Paula, coming, etc. That uh, did some casting the, uh, next to you. So thank you to everyone for there. Thank you for the sponsors. And I hope that uh, you all enjoyed this tournament. I feel so as well. And um, thank you a lot, Black Sky, for everything you did with organizing this tournament. And thank you for hosting it with me. Um, Thanks again a lot to Keller, who did a lot of admin work. Um, Polar, who did Polar. quite something and casted the semifinals as well, and as well as some earlier sets. Other streamers, casters we had were like AR12 casting multiple sets, Fly Like Django coming in with uh, his quite significant viewers, oh, yeah. also putting cool. something on YouTube. Green Dude even casted a game. Has he streaming his point of view? That was fantastic. Um, coming casting as well, and Adishu, you're casting some recorded games, I think. Um, Adishu thanks, did cast some recorded games, yes, because he's from Australia, so a bit, bit hard for to get it live. <laughs> uh, and then what else? Yeah, I forgot about Keller. Yeah, I think Keller's for all the work he's doing, and let's hope that we have the same energy, the same conviction of the players, the same training from Frost in the Emerald Cup 5. <laughs> I'm sure we are going to have that. And um, yeah, I'm very happy with how the tournament went. I think the format worked really well, like for a little, be a little bit of more experimental with like the three chosen sifts for the game once. We saw quite some different combinations. Like there was only the marketplace start, I guess, where everybody went into Starnies on all the other things. We had different thoughts about the sifts. 
Um, and the FASO system, I think, worked really well and it worked better than last World Cup because people prepared more very interesting matchups. And I was really happy with how the FASO system worked out this time. Yes. And as well, this is one of the tournaments that went very smooth. We had no hiccups, no problems with players, nothing. Everybody just played his part. Uh, we had no drama at all. Like It was really... Really uh, good community that we had in this tournament from the players. Yeah, amazing from the players. Like, no admin wins. Like, or everybody showed up to their final stage games. Um, we ended on the weekend that we wanted to end on. Thank you a lot for everybody who like, was, was so great, uh, especially also from the players' side. Let's hope to have the same for the World Cup 5. 